grandfather, I'm in trouble. How is this? Look, it's Jenny's father. He's an hour early. But what does this have to do with trouble? You should be happy to see Jenny early. Yeah, but not her father. I'm up to my ears in Greece. How does she feel about you and your greasy hands? She wants me to do whatever I'm happy doing. Then you must find a place for yourself. One that'll make your mother and father happy, too. Fat chance. What is this fat chance you speak of? No chance. You've heard them badger me about going to college. High school nearly wiped me out. Listen to me. You must make it right with Ben Lon Jumper and with your mother and father before you take Jenny on for a wife. How can I? They all want her to marry a degree. Davy! Davy, you're gonna be late. And besides that, my dad wants to talk to you for a few minutes. What about? Hey, do you like my new dress? I wanted to look extra special for your father's speech this afternoon. I mean, after all, an Indian giving the commencement address at the college, that's great. Grandfather, you must be very proud of your son. It's a very great honor. Well, come on, Davy. Dad's waiting, and you've got to change clothes. Jenny, what does your father want to see me about? He didn't say a word about my dress. Have you decided on the university that Johnny's going to attend, Jim? Not yet, Ben. However, Johnny is considering several. Well, if there's anything I can do, a letter of introduction or whatever, please let me know. Thank you, Ben. 3.7. That's an excellent grade point average, Johnny. Thank you. Especially with all that math you're taking. You must be very proud of your son. Yes. Johnny's going to be a fine engineer. Johnny's a good student. He always studies hard. I hope you're listening to all this, Jenny, because the real secret to success is hard work and discipline. It's always been my philosophy that anyone can succeed if he really applies himself. Oh, Davy, come in, sit down. How are you, Mr. Longjumper? Well, David, I was about to give up. Your dad said it would take a while to scrape the grease off. <laughs> yes, sir. It does. Dad, uh, Davy's been rebuilding a car engine, and he's very good at that sort of thing. Jenny says you'd like to talk to me. What about? About college, Davy. Your dad thought I might influence you since I've been fairly successful. And you know, of course, that if I hadn't attained a degree, I wouldn't be earning what I earn as a CPA. Okay, but not everybody's cut out to be an accountant. That's true, but everybody needs a college education, whatever he becomes. We Indians must have an education. Look at your grandfather digging in the dirt to pass the time. If he had an education, he could still be useful. He is useful. He grows stuff to eat. But what does he have to show for it? You mean money? I guess if making money is a standard, neither one of us is useful. The point I'm making is this. Do you want to end up like your father? A highly respected man in the tribe, or... Or like grandfather? I can think of worse things. Davy. Davy, Mr. Longjumper makes sense. And because of the way you and Jenny feel about each other, you can't blame him for being concerned about a future. Do you want to spend the rest of your life digging dirt from under your fingernails? Well, look at your hands. We're due at the college in a little while, and there's no way you can make them presentable. What you're trying to say is that you're ashamed of me. I didn't say that. Davy! Davy! You go, of course. He's upset. Listen, they shouldn't have said those things in, in front of everybody and embarrassed you like that. 
But I still think you ought to go to the commencement. No matter how you feel, Davy, it's not right to miss your father's speech. You are not going, my grandson. They're ashamed of me, Grandfather, because I'd rather work in a car than go to college. Besides, I've heard Dad try that speech a thousand times. Davy, that's not the point. Now, your whole family will be there sitting together. You know how much it means to them. And everybody will be wondering why you're not in your place. As far as I'm concerned, I don't have any place. If there's no place for my grandson, there's no place for me. Now look what you've done. You know how much that speech means to him. I know this. They don't respect Grandfather any more than they do me. Oh, we'll talk about respecting Grandfather. You're just as bad as they are, Davy. Now, how often has he asked you to take him to Fort Sill to see the chief's grave? And how often have you refused? How would you like it if you had to take your grandfather to a grave? And everybody's there staring at you. It's a dumb superstition, and it's time he stopped it. You're ashamed of him because he remembers the old ways. And that's just as bad as your folks and mine being ashamed of you because you like to work with your hands. And if that's the one-sided way you're going to treat the people you love, then I just can't wait to get married to you. If you don't understand me any better than that, maybe we shouldn't get married. Ben, I'm sorry I put you on the spot. That's quite all right, Jim. I understand. It's the symptom of the younger generation. Jenny, Jenny, what's wrong? Grandfather, he's not going now either. You're not serious. He said if there's no room for Davy, there's no room for him. I just can't believe this has happened. We've all looked forward to this day for so long. Now half our family won't be going. There, there, darling. Don't worry. Everything will be all right. It's all my fault. It's getting late. We better be going. You better go on to the commencement, Grandfather. There's no point in you staying home because I had a run-in with the folks. I will stay. Okay. Besides, they won't miss us anyway. Of all the times for the dean to borrow my car. It's all right. Ben doesn't mind having us ride with him. Just the same, I'd rather have my own car. Hurry. This thing is hot. He's closed the door, Ben. Jim, I hope you don't put him to sleep. I'll do my best with my big chance. You know how the graduates are. Yes, I do. Been through it before, like you have. I'm so worried about that. I don't know why I have to get the time like this. It's so bad like that. Stubborn boy. Jim, maybe if we both went over and talked to him. No, it's too late. I don't know the first thing about a car engine. You, Johnny? Jim? No, I don't know a thing about it either. What are we going to do? Something's wrong with my father's car, David. It won't start. It was running well enough when you drove up a while ago. What happened? I don't know what happened. It just won't start. Would you mind taking a look at it, please? David, it's tw 12 miles to town. We're running out of time, and your father's afraid he's going to be late.
Johnny, give me a flatbed screwdriver. Okay, now give me the pliers. The needle nose pliers. Can I give me a rag? Thank you, Davey. Davey. Davey, it would mean a lot to your grandfather to come to the exercises. Well, thanks again, son. That boy is quite a mechanic. Yes. He continues to surprise me. You know, Grandfather, that was the lick that did it. I do not understand this lick you speak of. They run me down for having grease under my fingernails. Then they come begging me to fix the car for them. It is right you are angry, Grandson. Without you, my son, who knows many books, would be still sitting in that twine car. You'd like to go, wouldn't you, Grandfather? It's not important. But you'd like to hear Dad's speech. See all those people listening to him, wouldn't you? I can see them in my mind. Come on, let's change our clothes. I do not like black clothes. Well, what you want? We just earned a little respect around here. Come on. Real good, Grandfather. Nothing will stop us now. Oh, no. Grandfather, what are we going to do now? If he stops us, we'll never make it on time. Then I will ask the spirit of Quanah Parker and the spirits of all the dead Comanches to help make the hot rod go faster. Holy no! Which way is the universe? Over there. The spirit of Parna Parker says, go that way. anything to see the look on that cop's face. What does the spirit of Quanta Parker say now, Grandfather? He says, 
Nice try. All right, let's see your driver's license. I know you won't believe this, officer, but I've got a good excuse. There's no excuse for that kind of driving. David Swifthands, Jim Swifthands' son? That's right. In fact, we're on our way to the college to hear my father's commencement address. But we were late, and that's why I was in a hurry. That's still no excuse for speeding. Yes, sir. Had a class from your father last summer in law enforcement. Oh, yeah? Best teacher I ever had. And that's not just because I'm Comanche, either. Here's my son. Let's get you to that speech. Follow me. And remember, I said follow, not pass. It doesn't make any difference in what field he is striving, whether it be in the arts or the sciences, in business or profession, or in any other chosen field. The truly educated person is one who realizes that there are all types of education, some not to be found in books. For those who hunger for academic knowledge, a degree may be the answer. We are all enriched by the great minds that have come from our small college. But we need other types of knowledge, too. Today, our hey, civilization is absolutely dependent upon machines. And we are crying for someone to fix our plumbing, our air conditioning, and our plush automobiles. We must also realize that there is beauty and dignity in working with your hands. Because the Indians dug in dirt, we now have a knowledge of irrigation. And we enjoy uh, the potatoes, the corn, beans, tomatoes, watermelon, and many other foods. Yet, if a man's fingernails are broken and rimmed with dirt and grease, the academic world uh, has a tendency to patronize him, to look down on him in contempt. If this man is good at his trade, doing the thing he loves to do, we should be grateful to him. We should make a place for him. We should acknowledge Come our on, debt Brad to him Father. and to Let's this go type sit of with the knowledge, family. without which okay. our civilization could not survive. Do you dig ditches, pitch hay? That's honorable. Do you paint fences, pump gas, lay bricks? That's honorable. Every human being has the natural instinct to seek and acquire food for himself. But when he comes to the point that he earnestly and sincerely desires that there be food for others, his life has been enriched by what might be termed a moral...